President Obama has said that uh, racism is in the DNA of America and transmitted through the generations. This is a malicious libel. It is, in fact, the most malicious libel ever uttered by an American president against his own country. Slavery existed in Africa for a thousand years before a white person ever set foot there. Slavery existed in all societies for 3,000 years. Uh, just it was a common, it's what you did when you conquered your enemy, you enslaved the men and, and the women. From the beginning of time, no one ever said that slavery was immoral. Not Aristotle, not Moses, not Jesus, until white Christians in England, led by Wilberforce, did at the, towards the end of the 18th century. And in the British colonies at the time, a white slave owner named Thomas Jefferson wrote into America's birth certificate that liberty is a God-given right that government can't take away, and equality too. Within just a little more than a generation, and at the cost of 350,000 union lives, slavery was abolished in America and quickly then in the Western Hemisphere. Every black person alive in this country owes their freedom to America. That is the true DNA of America. It is liberty, not racism. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Bruce Karasik, co-founder of the Jewish Republican Alliance and JRA Nation. Thank you for joining us. We're so happy to have David Horowitz here with us today. We'll be speaking with David in just a few minutes. But first, there's an old joke that said, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, my friends, we now have an administration that is more wrong, more often, more consistently than a broken clock. Joe Biden has been wrong on so many of the important issues of the day. Joe Biden has been wrong on COVID-19. From the very start, he opposed President Trump's travel ban, calling it hysterical xenophobia. Early on, he and his advisors downplayed the risk of COVID and it being an emerging problem for America and the world. Biden and Kamala Harris did not trust the vaccine before they were elected and now suddenly trust it after they were elected. He politicized the pandemic during the election while hiding in a basement and choosing tyranny over freedom in the name of public health. And now he's telling vaccinated people that they have to continue to wear a mask. But recently, the Bidens visited former President Jimmy Carter and Rosalind Carter and took a photo without a mask. And then as they were leaving, put on a mask for the cameras. Biden is wrong to pressure and coerce Americans to get the vaccine. He'd be better off encouraging them by explaining the benefits and the risks. He is wrong by not giving additional freedoms or any benefits to vaccinated Americans or all Americans, forcing them to continue to wear masks while he and his friends, Newsom and Pelosi, go to restaurants and salons while others less fortunate could not. Joe Biden has been wrong on foreign policy by abandoning Israel, our closest ally in the Middle East, funding the Palestinians without preconditioning, angering the Russians, going soft on China, escalating the conflict between North Korea and America, where North Korea said last week that we are headed for a showdown with America. Wrong again by cozing up to the Iranians and attempting to get us back in the crazy Iranian nuclear deal. Wrong to invest, not to investigate John Kerry for his betrayal of Israel. Joe Biden has been wrong on the border and border security, wrong by opposing the wall, wrong by opening up our borders and increasing the risk of terrorists coming to America, releasing unvaccinated illegal aliens into our country, never to be seen again, wrong to form 
a policy that encourages trial, child trafficking and drug trafficking, wrong by refusing to let reporters into detention centers, buying up hotel rooms for illegal aliens in border towns, and giving more privileges in many cases to illegal aliens than to Americans. He is wrong on election integrity, wrong to oppose the Georgia election bill, calling it racist, opposing voter ID, opposing a ban on ballot harvesting and signature verifications, opposing limits on unsolicited mail-in ballots, demonizing anyone who has questions about the validity of the 2020 election, wrong on domestic policy, trying to pack the Supreme Court, increasing taxes and regulations, wrong on HR1, wrong on riots and lootings and violence in our streets, wrong on excessive spending and har our hard earned dollars being wasted, wrong on spending on an unnecessary pet projects that go on and on and on, wrong on canceling the Keystone price pipeline that is now creating rising gas prices at almost $5 a gallon in California, wrong by preventing pre free speech while bowing to big tech, wrong on releasing violent criminals back on the streets while compromising the safety of all Americans while being quick to demonize police officers. And finally, on September 18th, 2020, President Trump tweeted the following. If it were up to Joe, bin Laden, Soleimani would still be alive. ISIS would still be on the rampage and China would now be the dominant power in the world, not America. So I wanna tell you, we have a right to speak out. We will continue to speak out. And we're so happy that you are here today. And now it is my great privilege to introduce fellow co-founder, Mitch Silberman. Mitch. Hello, JRA community. It is always so great when we are together. 17 years ago this month, my family and I moved into our house in Thousand Oaks, California. At the time our kids were one, two, and three. We were out in front and a dad walked by with his 12 year old daughter to greet us and welcome us to the neighborhood. So you know what I'm thinking, babysitter. So we struck up a conversation, we exchanged names. Turns out we're both Jewish. And then I went in for the kill. I said, you think your daughter might be interested in babysitting our kids? He said, sure. And I said, yes. So we continued the conversation and this happened. He said to me, what did you say your last name was again? And I said, Silberman. <laughs> well, the floodgates opened. He went on a tirade of how much he hated President Bush, that his own daughter didn't realize what an idiot we had in the White House, and he was going on and on and on. And finally, after his tirade, I politely said, you know, I actually voted for him. Well, the conversation came to an abrupt end. Never saw him again, and no, the daughter never babysat for us. So there's a couple of takeaways from this. First of all, isn't it remarkable that Jews on the left are so comfortable telling us their political views because they know for sure we agree with them. I mean, how can we possibly disagree? Of course, we on the right keep it to ourselves for the most part. But the other takeaway is far more troubling. It pains me to say this, but if there's an organization or a movement that's bad for America, usually there's some Jews involved. And it, it pains me to say that. I mean, look at the ECLU. Look at now the ADL, Black Lives Matter being in favor of the Iran deal. These are bad. These are bad for us. They are bad for our, our reputations. This is bad for America. And, and the Jews are known for so many fantastic things. I mean, think about it, hard work, family, education, success, charitable giving. We helped found the NAACP. We walked, we walked shoulder to shoulder with Martin Luther King. Of course, not to mention the Ten Commandments and bringing monocle, uh, mono, you know, uh, mono, uh, ethicalism to the world monotheism. So my mom of blessed, blessed memory used to say that when something bad happened on a grand scale, please don't have Jews involved. We don't need the bad press. So obviously you didn't tune in today so we could cheer you up, right? Uh, so what do we do about it? And as I've said over and over again, you have to engage, it's incumbent upon us that we engage with those that we disagree with. And what I said before is if they're on the far left, don't bother, they're part of a cult, you're probably not gonna get them out, although our guest today can speak to that. But we have plenty of people in our lives, friends and family that are moderates or are liberal, and we have to engage with them. And the two things I said is you have to ask questions and you have to be respectful. But I'm going to give you a third tool you have to use. You got to fight fire with fire. You're going to have to use the F word, feelings. 
as wrong as the left is on almost everything, they are very good at feelings. It's a feelings-based movement. So when you start discussing issues with people on the left, forget the facts and figures and the data and the numbers, go for the feelings. I had this happen. I was talking to a friend of mine, a moderate Democrat, and I asked him, well, how do you feel about a mom delivering a baby, giving birth, and then the doctor takes the baby and places it on the table, and then you have a discussion about what to do with it? He was horrified. He said, oh, no, 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 that's that. No, no, that's wrong. I said, well, that's the position of your party today. And you can also ask, well, how do you, do you think it's a good idea to give a um, Iran billions of dollars when they purposely out loud chant death to America and death to Israel? Do you think that's a good idea to give them billions of dollars? And do you think they may use that money to hurt, hurt us, harm us, kill us? So you've got to go for the feelings. You've got to go for the emotions because it works. We are all emotional beings. I don't care if you're an engineer or an accountant. This is the way we are made. We decide with emotion, we justify with logic. And it's incumbent upon all of us to continue to fight for the Judeo-Christian values upon which our beloved country is founded. And speaking of fighting, there is almost no one better than that, our guest today. It's truly an honor to introduce David Horowitz. His political journey from a 60s radical to a Reagan conservative and the friends and enemies he has made along the way makes for a very interesting, very compelling story. It's widely acknowledged that it's much better to have David Horowitz with you than against you. David is a noted conservative commentator and a national best-selling author. He's also the founder and CEO of the David Horowitz Freedom Center in Los Angeles and the author of many, many books, including his newest one, The Enemy Within. David, welcome. Thank you. It's the book. Fantastic. Notice who the enemy is. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to be posting the, the link to that book up there on, on our on our yeah. chat line. And David, welcome. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Um, the last time we saw you uh, was at your remarkable and amazing 80th birthday party, where we had uh, Rich Little and Larry Elder and Mike Huckabee, to name a few. It was a great celebration, and we were so happy uh, to be there to celebrate with you. Um, in my opening remarks, I commented pretty harshly on the Biden administration and his history. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on, on now President Joe Biden and what he's done so far and where the country's going. Yeah, the, uh, the Alzheimer puppet, Joe Biden, <laughs> <laughs> too much. <laughs> I said anything Joe Biden has to say. I don't know if you saw the clip of Nancy Pelosi saying, to Jen Psaki, we don't want him to talk. Um, yeah. um, look, we're in the early stages of a fascist regime. The uh, horrifying comment, of racist comment of Barack Obama, treasonous, uh, that racism is in our DNA was topped by Joe Biden. On, uh, I think it was his first, first appearance as president where he said that systemic racism is, uh, touches every aspect of American life. This is a monstrous lie worthy of the Hitlerites in Tehran. And speaking of which, Joe Biden has surrounded him. Every official that I know that has an influence on our foreign policy in the Middle East is a Jew hater. Uh, and a lot of them are Jews, self-hating Jews. Um, the... Democrat Party, my book, The Enemy Within, subtitle was how a totalitarian movement is destroying America. This is the left that I came out of. As you know, I was raised by communists. Uh, I was a leader of the new left. And I left it because I saw it was not about peace or justice. It was about hating America and wanting the enemies, to our enemies to win. And it's remained, it, the, the left has remained consistent in that. Um, they're the fountainhead of anti-Semitism in this country, without a question. Um, the, uh, the Democrat party today is a racist party. Everybody with eyes can see that, just listen to them. Um, why do I say uh, there's no systemic racism in America? Because it was outlawed by the Civil Rights Act. So in so many words, so if there was systemic, well, there is affirmative action is systemic racism. It's privileging certain people on the basis of their skin color. 
Um, it's even, it's kind of worse than that because there are these five select groups which the left has so selected because it thinks they were oppressed by us. Um, if there were systemic racism, say in the 18,000 police departments that we have, there would be a tsunami of lawsuits and billions of dollars collected in, in settlements without question. Uh, when you give $27 million to a drug addict's family because he got himself killed uh, resisting arrest, um, you know those lawsuits would be very lucrative and they'd be all over the place. There are none because there is no systemic racism. And of course, they'd have to fire all those black police chiefs to, begin <laughs> to give it any credibility whatsoever. Um, it's an anti-American party. A president who blows up our southern border in the midst of a pandemic, first of all, in any case, can't have a country without borders. And, and what that means is a million, an estimated, a million illegals will just walk into our country. They will include drug traffickers, sex traffickers, violent criminals, violent, vicious cartel members, um, and 10% of them will be COVID carriers. That's 100,000 COVID carriers. Everything Joe Biden has ever said about the epidemic, whatever he said is a lie. Every time he moves his lips, he lies. Uh, he, he, he's the most confusing leader ever to, to appear on the world stage. He contradicts himself all the time. I'm just thinking of this scene with the Carters where you have 100 year old people inside you're hugging them, no mess. And then you walk outside and everybody's vaccinated. So you really didn't matter. But then you walk outside and you put a mask on. He's an idiot. I mean, he's not all there. I mean, that's obvious. And I think one of the great crimes of the Democrat party is to have foisted Joe Biden on us. And let's not forget who made Joe Biden the Democrat nominee. It was Jim Clyburn, who was a Farrakhan racist and anti-Semite, uh, along with a huge contingent of the uh, Black Caucus in the Congress and among the, and among the leadership of the Democrat Party, the head of the Civil Rights Division, so-called, of the Justice Department, Kristen Clark is a Farrakhan racist also. Cory Bush is a Farrakhan racist. I mean, I could go on and on. But uh, my message is that we have to take very seriously what's happened. What has the Democrat Party done for the last 10 years? They've conducted a campaign against every crucial aspect of America's political democracy. Uh, the latest, of course, is to pack the Supreme Court, which would destroy the independent judiciary. It would mean uh, that the Supreme Court is an appendage of the legislature uh, and, and therefore unable uh, to tell Democrat legislators that they can't pass this bill because it's unconstitutional. And they have a raft of unconstitutional bills um, and, and policies. Uh, they, Joe Biden has introduced systemic racism into, Amer into every aspect of, of, uh, of the White House pro policy programs. They're bailing out small businesses as, for everybody who's not white. That, that's illegal, you can't, <laughs> you can't do that. Um, but it's gonna take years in the courts to fight it. Um, so they wanna pack the Supreme Court, which is the linchpin of the checks and balances system because it, it, as I say, it will end the independence of the Supreme Court of the judiciary. Uh, they want to abolish the electoral college, which is in the constitution um, because it forces compromise because it forces presidential candidates and campaigns to campaign in battleground states where they don't have an inbuilt majority as the Democrats do in California and New York. That forces moderation. Um, they are at war with voter ID because they uh, are practiced and relentless practitioners of, of uh, election fraud. Um, you know, 
it's treason these days, according to the Democrats. Uh, and I just lost a friend of 67 years over this. Mm. Treason to question the election, even though the Republicans have questioned every Republican victory this century, both Bush elections. And of course, Trump's election, uh, where they went into the well of the house to decertify the electors and, and never really uh, accepted that Trump was president, uh, which means they sabotaged his administration, which caused great damage to this country and has divided it in a, as it hasn't been divided since the Civil War. Um, here's the, the voter ID question is transparent. Uh, first of all, it's racist. To, to, what the Democrats are saying is that poor black people are too stupid to vote, uh, to get a photo ID. But you can't get food stamps without a photo ID. You can't get welfare and you can't get prescription drugs and you can't get into the Democrat convention <laughs> either. <laughs> and uh, the solution, if, if it were true, and it's obviously a lie that this is voter suppression, um, the solution is really easy. You know, take a small piece of those trillion dollar giveaways and uh, just provide, have the government provide a photo ID to every American that needs them by law. Are you injecting a logic into this? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you shouldn't, the Democrats are hypocrites and liars. Yes, they are. Um, and they are destroying America systematically. These are, you know, just a few of the things. Did they steal the election? Well, actually nobody can answer that question because the Democrats have blocked every attempt and yeah. weak Republicans went along with them uh, to actually uh, audit audit the votes. But um, if, you, if you look at the statistic, first of all, I've never seen this statistic, but Joe Biden won by 0.027%, in, uh, which is 40,000 votes out of 159 million um, centered in, in the battleground states. Uh, Trump did what unprecedented, no incumbent president has ever increased his vote. He increased it by 10 million votes. He got 94% of the Republican vote. And this Alzheimer's case who couldn't campaign, campaigned from his basement. He came in fourth in the Democrat primaries in Iowa, fifth in the Democrat primaries in New Hampshire, a distant second in Nevada. And, the and what they're claiming is he got 16 million more votes than Obama. I got a bridge to sell you, believe that. Um, but you can't raise- We're counting the same votes over and over again and not checking the accuracy of the vote. But, That's the problem. But I want to just talk a bit uh, about January 6th. Uh, January 6th was uh, a demonstration. Uh, if you've read Trump's speech, what he said was uh, he challenged this election result, which according to Nancy Pelosi, is treason. She actually said Republicans are enemies of the state yeah. in so many words. Um, he questioned it and he said, there are weak Republicans. First of all, all those battleground states, the legislatures the, are controlled by Republicans who didn't stand up at, like, as in Georgia. Um, so he said, we have weak Republicans. I want you to go and protest peacefully and patriotically and try to stiffen the spines of those Republicans uh, who would be in the Capitol. He also, by the way, for those who think he incited in it, well, uh, think is not something you want to associate with Democrats. Um, he offered 10,000 troops to guard the Capitol that day, January 6th, which was rejected by the the, I, I call her Nan, Nancy Pelosi, and that's what she is, was rejected by Pelosi to lure everybody into a trap, um, the 10,000. Uh, but Trump said, if you fail to stiffen, and this is all in a speech, it's on the web, everybody uh, who cares to can read it. 
if you fail to stiffen the spines of these Republicans, then what you must do is go home and prepare to uh, primary all those weak Republicans and get strong Republicans in there. In other words, perfectly democratic, perfectly reasonable speech to give. How have the Democrats reacted? The people trespassed, no question. How they got in, who broke in, we don't know. Why, there were, why Pelosi didn't order more Capitol Police, we can guess, but we don't know. Um, unlike, uh, unlike the racists uh, and criminals of Black Lives Matter and Antifa, they didn't burn the Capitol. They didn't burn federal buildings. Underlie, unlike Linda Sarsour, they didn't interrupt and obstruct uh, a, a Judiciary Committee confirmation hearing for Brett Kavanaugh. Um, uh, they set fire to nothing. Whatever damage that was done was minimal. Uh, everybody who died was a, a Trump supporter. And one woman was murdered. And her murder, uh, Ashley Babbitt, she unarmed, uh, a small person, not a menacing figure, 14 year Air Force veteran. Um, there's a video of her taken by a Hispanic journalist where you can see the revolver reaching through a door. She's not threatening anything. She's just standing there murdering her. Uh, the journalist is in jail. Pelosi's had him arrested. This is all a show, uh, it's, it's for a political show to create an imaginary threat which will justify a fascist repression is what I'm saying. Um, then she calls out 25,000 troops. There are people still locked up uh, in jail in Washington who were there that night, um, held without bail. And what's the charge? Trespassing. They've been five months in jail. <laughs> All of the rioters who burned federal buildings with people inside, actually, who killed people, they are released on bail immediately and they're out. This is a fascist regime and it's very reminiscent of the Reichstag fire, which is how the Nazis came to power. Hitler was elected like Joe Biden by a narrow margin in a democracy. As soon as he was elected, the Nazis burned their capital, which was the Reichstag, blamed it on a Dutch communist, passed the, the Reichstag Fire Act to take away the rights to suppress the opposition, their opponents, and set up the Third Reich. That's what Pelosi is attempting to do. Uh, you've probably forgotten, but the Democrats were demanding that 100 Republicans be expelled from the House for questioning the election. They, 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 Pelosi wanted uh, Josh Hawley, two senators, and Ted Cruz removed from the House for that. Black Lives Matter called them all white supremacists, naturally. So we, we have, you know, substitute for the, well, of course, the Jews are still uh, targets, <laughs> but uh, it's white people who are, the, who are the Jews now. If you're white and you disagree with a Democrat, you're a white supremacist. Uh, white nationalist. It is far gone, people. HR1 will institutionalize voter fraud. Um, it, it's, I, I will go over all the details. Um, the so called Equality Act. And notice how they're like totalitarians in the way that they do an infrastructure bill that's only 6% about in infrastructure. That deprives you of voting on whether we can afford the kind of childcare that Biden wants, the kind of educational subsidies, the kind of unemployment insurance that gives incentives to people not to work. Uh, but you don't ever get to make the choice because they throw it into something called COVID Relief Act, which isn't about COVID relief either. So we, we have a, I, I think it's very important. Conservatives are way too polite, patriots. It's like they don't want to embarrass their enemies who want to kill them in public. And trust me, if these people aren't stopped, they will put us in camps to re-educate us. They've already telegraphed that that's what they're going to do. 
But why shouldn't they? Since they consider us traitors, racists, white supremacists, insurrectionists, armed insurrectionists, there were no arms. They, they, they arrested 300 people. They didn't find a single firearm. Um, David, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You just made a very important point. You, by the way, your, your points are beyond brilliant. I, I, I'm just riveted by what you have to say. I know our audience as well. When you talk about what the right- It's all in the book. It's all in the book, great. But we're gonna, we put it out there and, and we want people to read it. When you talk about the Reichstag and um, you know, telegraphing what they're going to do, um, you know, the people that are watching now, they're, they're, they're on our side, they're very committed. But what would you say to a, uh, a moderate Democrat who heard this and they say, oh, come on, you can't be serious. How would you combat that to oh, someone who doesn't know what you know? Defend the deconstruction of the American political system. Um, have them defend having 500 people in, oh, I, we don't know, not 500. Having however many are still in jail for, for five months charged with trespassing. Uh, or having, saying that your political opponents are armed insurrectionists and traitors. I, you know, it used to be that liberals, these people aren't liberal. I, stop calling them liberals. They're, they're vindictive bigots is what they are. They're not liberal about anything except sex, hard drugs, <laughs> spending other people's money, coddling and releasing supporting criminals uh, <laughs> and giving aid and comfort to our enemies. Joe Biden, the first things that he's done is to restore money to the Islamic Nazis the, uh, of Hamas and the PLO. These people are evil. And uh, again, stop being polite when you discuss this. There, there is no Palestinian cause. Israel was built on land that belonged to uh, the Turkish empire. They're not Arabs. <laughs> and and uh, there, were, there were no Palestinians. That's an invented nationality. So this is a, a Holocaust that's being planned, uh, aided and abetted by Obama and Biden, uh, the chief aiders and abettors of this. Um, the I, very idea that you could have a, a deal with the Iranian mullahs is insanity. Who believes it? John Kerry is a lifelong traitor. He started by you know, testifying to atrocities that he never witnessed, allegedly committed by Americans in Vietnam. And now you know, he's married, his family is married into this Nazi regime in Tehran got to start using the right language, even though at first it's people will be shocked by it, I guess. I feel a little lonely in that, you know, I, well, there's one Republican who's called a Democrat and it was a black Democrat, a racist, and he was a racist, is Donald Trump. The only Republican I know who's referred to the left as fascist is Donald Trump. I mean, this guy is showing the way, follow him. It is David is 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 Donald Trump the, the future of the Republican Party? In Absolutely, better be. And that's what we think. And you, so you many know, people have tried to stop him, but he's the only one that has publicly stood he, up to the name calling. He when has he, learned his politics, his style, from fighting the mafia and casino unions. That's the base of the Democrat Party. That's when they, they are mafia. Come on. I mean, what Republican would get a, could get away with calling Democrats uh, enemies of the state? Come on. You never hear the end of it. But Republicans and conservatives are also polite. They don't mention it. Yeah, our party is filled with, uh, I'm with you, David. Our party is filled with the honorable gentlemen who want to lose with dignity. You know, those days have got to be gone. Um, so I have a question. For those of us who have yet to read your book, The Enemy Within, what's one of the most shocking things that, that was, would be revealed to us in that book? Well, what I do in the book uh, is, first of all, deal with the ideology that unites all these people. Uh, identity politics, cultural Marxism, it's crackpot racism is what it is. And, and, and the whole sexism, all these left-wing isms. I mean, I, I, uh, 
you know, like I, there's a chapter on Ta-Nehisi Coates, for, for example. Anybody not know the name Ta-Nehisi Coates? He's probably the most prominent writer on race in America, him and Ibram Kendi now. Um, son of a Black Panther, won a National Book Award, has a MacArthur Genius Award. A raving lunatic racist, very good writer. But other than that, but he's a, why do I call him a raving racist? Aside from saying that America is built on plunder and racism and whatnot, um, the center of the book that won the National Book Award for Coates uh, was the killing of his friend, um, I forget his last name, but something like Prince Jones. His friend was black and was killed. Uh, the cop uh, ran, accused him of trying to, was a, trying to arrest him as a drug dealer. And he tried to run the cop over and the cop killed him. And the, the hard thing for Coates is the fact that the cop is black. And he goes on in his book, not only is the cop black, but everybody who appointed him in Montgomery County, every, everybody in authority, is black too. How does he explain that? White people did it. There is no, you know, black crime, black on black crime, I forget what he calls it, but it's, it's an illusion. Behind it all are white supremacists. This is the toast of the town. He writes for the Atlantic. I mean, it, this is where the so-called the liberal elites are in our country. Um, I deal with the blacklist, which is very, well, I, I, I have a, one of the things I'm proudest of in this book is my account of the Kavanaugh hearings. I mean, conservatives have written books about the Kavanaugh hearings, but they don't come near to what actually happened. This uh, intimidation by the Me Too leftists caused the uh, Republicans on that committee to shut up until Lindsey Graham's late outburst. But uh, look, Christine Blasey Ford is a proven liar. First of all, she wanted to, she, they hit her until they knew they were, had lost it. Schumer had this demonstration on the steps of the Supreme Court saying that, you know, that he was going to die stopping Kavanaugh. Why hold hearings? And everybody, every Democrat on the judiciary and Republicans went along with this. And they, they couldn't even question Christine Blasey Ford, who was exposed as a blatant liar by this, they got a female prosecutor. That's how powerful those ideologies are. So a lot of the book is that. Then I, I deal with the blacklist. I gave a speech to Alec two years ago, three, in 2018, in August. Um, and I basically, Alec is a, an association of state legislators and it was, it's bipartisan and it's, it's about small government and things. And I got invited by a group that wanted to hold a constitutional convention. Um, and so I use the occasion to say, uh, you know, Republican, basically Republicans are pussies. They don't use their power. They, you have to follow Donald Trump. And the examples I gave are uh, Republicans control a lot of states, yet Black Lives Matter is in control of the curriculum in California. Uh, of Philadelphia. In California, um, the Muslim Brotherhood has a whole curriculum. Um, and you know, Republicans say nothing. That, that's what. And that was one sentence. I call Black Lives Matter a racist organization. And I, I don't know what I refer to the Muslim Brotherhood. That's in a 12 or 15 page speech, which is on the internet. Some Democrat. Uh, who was there, uh, she experienced shell shock listening to me talk. She said it was a catastrophe. And, uh, you know, this racist Horowitz, who was uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center, has me as one of the 10 most dangerous hate mongers in America. Um, before I knew it, 
They had organized 79 leftist organizations to write a letter to the sponsors. I think they lost about $100,000. We're talking about AT&T, Verizon had funded them for 20 years. In their statements, they make no reference to anything I said, nothing. <laughs> anything that would, it, it was just the, it's what Dershowitz calls guilt by accusation. Uh, and they withdrew their funding. Dow Chemical, I mean, the really big companies. That, that was August. The, the midterms uh, were in, launched in September. Um, Ron DeSantis was already under attack for, call, for saying he didn't want a socialist drug addict, he didn't use the word drug addict, but that's what he was, to monkey up the economy. He said a socialist. So they already were attacking. They were already attacking him as a racist. We let the dogs out. I bought a dog silencer, but <laughs> it doesn't have a battery. <laughs> <laughs> David, I have a question for you. I want to finish this story because it gets much worse. Uh -oh. So before I know it, the Democrat Party is taking up this claim because DeSantis spoke at four of my events. The headline in the Huffington Post was Ron DeSantis gives four paid speeches for infamous racist David Horowitz. It was all over the, the Florida papers. I mean, I was praying the whole time that he would win. I mean, he's a really great guy. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of isolated me a little. If I were him, I, you know, I wouldn't be coming to my events again. <laughs> but, uh, but this blacklist is huge. People don't realize what it affects and how much it affects. I mean, so... Right now, I'm, I'm blacklisted on Fox, and I can't figure out why, but my guess is it's the fallout. This was all, it was across the nation, GQ, New York Magazine, I mean, you can go through all the magazines, all repeated this story. Uh, of course, I didn't pay DeSantis, uh, but I'm also not a racist. Um, that's why I, 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 when I say fascism, I mean fascism. I don't mean anything less. And you can't get, you know, there's a, a revolt of the comedians against the, and why do we call it cancel culture? It's Nazi culture, but crying out tears. Dr. Seuss is bad. The Nazis burn books, that's book burning. You can't just burn books these days because the digital universe, you can't set it on fire. Well, but that's what it is. Why are we being so nice? Or call it blacklisting, which is the same thing. Your, your, dog, your dog agrees with you. He got upset. <laughs> I, I have a I have a two part question for you, David. Um, we're we sitting on this show. We're we're sitting on this show with three Republican Jews: Horowitz, Karasik, and Silberman. And we get this question all the time, and I would love to. Hear your take as to why so many of our of the Jews out there do not see what we see of the things that we just and, many books. and the second part I'd like you to talk about the David so Harwich just, Freedom Center and the great work it's being done under uh, leadership of Michael Finch. I'm sorry I didn't hear the second question. The second question is, uh, you know, please tell our audience who don't know a little bit about the David Horowitz Freedom oh. Center and the great work that is being done by Michael Finch here in Michael California. Finch has been a blessing to me. Um, well, we're a battle tank. This, what you're hearing now is what we do um, about the Jews. I actually attended I gave up after a while fighting this battle, but a JCCC, whatever it is, meeting where I can't remember, you know, I'm 82. I, it's very hard with names, <laughs> but some state Jewish Democrat legislature, he gave a speech and said, we are the light, they are the darkness, meaning Republicans. Uh, it was, it's, it's the old joke that reform Judaism is the Democrat Party with holidays. Um, 
Leftism is a crypto religion. And, and I, all the deracinated Jews, uh, they need the religion and the religion is now communism, if you like, I call it fascism, it doesn't really matter. It's uh, socialism, utopianism. It's a dream of a world that's redeemed. It started with the Jews, the promised land. There is no promised land that has social justice. If you are a student at all of Genesis, you understand that the root cause of all our problems is us. It's human beings really screwed up. Here we were given paradise, which is better than the Green New Deal, better than, of course, socialism or communism. Um, you know, no pain in childbirth, you live forever, the fruit falls from the trees. But one condition, and that is that you not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, you don't want to do evil. And the serpent comes along and says that uh, if you eat of that tree, you shall be as God. And that's the left in a nutshell. They think they're gods remaking the world and they don't understand that there can never be social justice because it's going to be administered by human beings who are venal, corrupt, selfish, dishonest, if we could go on and on. It's a constant fight. The fact that there are good people in the world is kind of a miracle. And I, you know, the older I get, the less sympathy I have for people who have this delusion, which every liberal or a radical Jew has, um, that people are good. People are not good. You know, just, just watch those crime shows. People are horrifying. You know, I don't know, we have that principal paddling this six-year-old in school that's all over the internet. How did this woman get to be a teacher? How did she get to be a principal? Brutalizing a six-year-old like that. I just... Yeah, that, that was uh, that was heartbreaking. That uh, it, it was vile. Um, David, so much, we have so many questions from the audience. They, yeah, they love what you're saying. You get to some of them. Yeah, because um, we only have a little bit of time, but we have a great question from Ruben G, who says, "I believe Obama is actually calling the shots, telling Biden and his handlers what to do." What do you think? Well, I saw this video of Pelosi telling him, telling his keeper to shut him up. Don't let him talk. That's what you, we don't want him to talk. Sure, Obama, it doesn't matter. The Democrat party is a communist party. Has the same outlook as my parents did who were card carrying communists. And let's not forget the communist party used to say they're Jeffersonian Democrats. We have a question from Howard W. He said, while there's probably a number of things over time, if you had to pick one thing that changed your direction from a liberal Democrat to a conservative Republican, what never was it? Liberal. Point? I was never, I hated liberals. Um, I came to appreciate liberal America uh, when I left the left. Uh, and I've written, I wrote, I wrote an autobiography, which has all this, but. I raised, I, I was the editor of the largest magazine of the left in the 60s. And I was introduced to the Black Panther Party by a Hollywood producer. So nothing has really changed. <laughs> and uh, I raised $125,000 to buy a Baptist church in East Oakland. I called it the Oakland Community Learning Center. And since I believed our own propaganda. I thought the racists, racist government would put it out of business. I created a tax exempt foundation to run it. That uh, if the books weren't kept, um, if the, I, I was just looking to see if my dogs are gonna erupt again. Uh, if, the, if the books of the learning center were not correctly kept, uh, uh, they would shut it down because they're racists. And they couldn't recruit. They couldn't recruit. They couldn't recruit a black bookkeeper because the black community knew that the, can the 
the Black Panthers were killer gangsters. They killed people, all of them black, except this woman that I got to keep the books of the school. They murdered her, her name was Betty Van Patter. She was the mother of three children, which sent me into a deep tailspin. I mean, it was just, oh, it was horrifying that I, I had recruited her. Um, and she didn't talk to me because she probably recruited me as a racist for, I don't know, not approving everything the Panthers did, whatever. Um, that happened, it, her body was fished out of San Francisco Bay in January, I'm trying to think, I think it was January 17th or 13th, something like that, or maybe it was February, 1975. In April, the United States was forced to withdraw from Vietnam because of the left, the pressures of the left, too, too much domestic chaos, too many bombings and so forth. And uh, that was the great victory of the left. The communists came into power and they proceeded to slaughter two and a half million Indo-Chinese peasants, including everyone who wore in Cambodia who wore eyeglasses because they carried the bad ideas of the past. That's the leftist delusion, they're redeeming the world. Um, so I knew I was involved in an evil movement. And uh, the first thing I wanted to do was to warn people about how malicious and evil the left was. It wasn't a movement about peace and justice, it was a hate America movement. And that movement is now in control of the Democrat party. That's, that's wow. our, our state. The, the, the good news is that Trump has created the first conservative mass movement in the history of the country. If people get in the faces of the teachers in these schools uh, that are indoctrinating the kids in Marxism and hate Americanism, if they get in the face of the uh, Mark Zuckerbergs and the Jeff, uh, Jack Dorseys, why aren't there demonstrations at the headquarters of Twitter? Anyway, that's that's the path to liberation. Well, that's a, that leads us to another great question from uh, Gregory F. He said, what's the end game of the Democratic Party? Once they have control, then what? They don't, oh, well, first of all, like I say, they're gonna arrest people like me. Uh, they're gonna, well, they've already tried to criminalize dissent. Look, we have, after, after January 6th, they had a two month stand, stand out in the military while they hunted extremists, guess who they are? Um, Department of Homeland Security, Capitol Police. Um, they just allotted $89 million to have a national witch hunt of extremists. Come on, the handwriting is right there. It's, just, just requires the uh, courage to see it, to know how bad the state is. And that, that's the prelude to reversing it. We still have a democracy. If HR1 doesn't pass, we still have some semblance of a democracy. You know, every election is gonna be fixed uh, or they're gonna attempt to fix it. So it's gonna be a real battle. But I think conservatives are finally waking up Obama waked up a lot of people and, and this jerk. I mean, I don't know, how can people watch their television screens and not be horrified by, yeah. by Kamala Harris? Say. I mean, after all, he ran. This woman accused him on before 70 million people or whatever it was in the, in the primary debates of being a rapist and a racist. And she joined him. What kind of morals does she have for principles? None. She's a criminal. No, they all are. I mean, they're just gangsters. We have a question from Ruben G. He asks you to comment on three Republicans, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, and mm -hmm. Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn, I, I think Caitlyn has a chance to win the governorship in your state and save it. I don't know. Who knows? I, I don't trust Nikki Haley. Uh, I think Tim Scott is a tremendous asset for the party, even though he won't be talking the way I talk. 
um, it takes many types to move a movement. We well, need on that note, I'm going to piggyback on that. Who do you think is going to be potential nominees in the Republican Party in 2024? Um, Trump DeSantis. Do you think President Trump will run again? Or he's going to decide to be kingmaker on the side? Maybe not. Look at the sacrifices this guy has made for this country. How could he give? We we'll never give it up. What's he going to do? Fish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think he, I don't know if he's ever fished. That's a great question. This In a not, suit and tie. It's not the kind of guy who retires. So. David, I wanted to thank you very much for coming on today. It's been our great privilege. We've been admirers of yours for such a long time, and we really appreciate your, your intellectual and emotional description on what's going on in today's world. All right. Well, thanks for having me. And help me out. Look, I'm, I'm having a harder time with it. It's the most important book I've written. Um, and it's a, it's a guide to what's happening. We just put a link out to our audience so they can purchase the book. Okay, great. Many times, many times during the broadcast. Oh, okay, great. But we, we hope we can see you when you come back to a, a, an event at the David Horowitz. Travel so well, I don't know. Um, I think we're gonna hold another weekend in November. Right, I got the uh, invitation already. <laughs> But I don't, I don't, it's hard at my age. You, know, you I, have, plenty, I, I you have never, plenty of fight in you. I can see it. I do, but the body, boy, it, it's in revolt. <laughs> well, we, we've had two 82-year-old intellectuals on our program, Alan Dershowitz and yourself, that are both a lot, a lot more sharp than our current president is at, at a younger age. That's easy. <laughs> In any age. <laughs> In any age. Work from the get go. Well, thank you again, David. And thank you all, everybody, for attending today. You know, we are so excited to be able to bring you great guests like David Horowitz. Um, and we have some amazing shows coming up still. Um, on the 21st, we have uh, conservative Dave Rubin. And then on June 4th, we're going to have the police chief, Michael Moore, the, the Los Angeles police chief. So we'll have some exciting questions for both of them. You know, what you can do is stay informed, get involved and make a difference. Join our conversations. And yes, we've had numerous requests to have live events again. We want to do it. We don't want to do it with masks and all the venues are requiring masks. So we're hoping to make that go away. But we want you to keep watching. Get involved with our social media and please make a donation, get involved, refer a friend, help us grow this. We need your support to be able to fight for these important issues that we all talked about today on today's show. So a special thank you again to David Horowitz. Until we meet again, Shabbat Shalom, everybody have a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Shabbat Shalom.